This is Advanced Autonomy, I'm Luke Renner. My guest today is Jordan Stern. He's the Senior Business Manager at Syngin, where he is primarily focused on helping industrial organizations deploy autonomy solutions in their ODDs today. Although the autonomous vehicle sector is a few years away from deploying full autonomy across all of transportation, AV tech is robust enough even today that industrial organizations can derive greater speed, efficiency, and profitability by making investments right now. The problem, of course, is how the hell to do that. So in this conversation, we are going to dive into the state of industrial AV capabilities and give you some clear steps to take to determine where and how your organization might be able to dip the toe in the next wave of vehicle intelligence and autonomy. Hey, Jordan, welcome to the show. Hey, Luke. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. So I thought to get us started, maybe you could give us an overview of the autonomous vehicle sector more broadly. How far along are we? How far do we have to go? Sure. I mean, it's a really exciting time. Um, I know what most people talk about when you think about autonomous vehicles is the cars that you and I will be riding around in on the street. And from that standpoint, there's a lot of fantastic technology innovation that's happening today, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, at Syngin, on my end, I, I do a lot of work with really focusing on how we bring that technology to um, industrial and commercial use cases. And what's great about that is, you know, the pipes of that technology are the same. The infrastructure, at least on the software side, is very similar, but the, the applications allow for value creation a lot faster. Um, and so when you talk about how far along are we in the sense of when can we start deploying these types of solutions, when you think about it in the industrial landscape, you know, it's, it's, we're pretty close and, you know, we're approaching the time where you can start deploying uh, and, and generating, you know, real efficiency gains and, and value for, for companies in the next year, two, three years. And when you really look at that five-year time horizon, um, there's really a lot that can be done and, and the technology is ready for deployment. You know, I think what's true about the space is that organizations are really focused on that five-year horizon, exactly like you said. Um, you know, Waymo, for example, they've spent three and a half billion dollars on R&D and they're sort of proceeding with the expectation that once they completely solve full autonomy, they'll be the leaders, right? USB predicts that this is going to be a $2.8 trillion industry here in a few years. So companies today might be looking at that and, and getting the sense that it's really difficult to kind of locate where we are in the space, what's possible today, and what they might be able to do now. So how should industrial organizations be thinking about autonomy in that context? What I usually talk to customers about when I think about how they should approach this all, this problem is, yes, it's great to have that end goal where we talk about uh, you know autonomous vehicles buzzing around doing everything by themselves and full automation within your facilities. That's great. But let's focus on making sure you get to that goal and you're a successful player in the space when you achieve it. Uh, we want to make sure that you're you're there and in five, six, seven years being a leader in this space and are able to operate in the new industrial world that we live in. And so when I work with them, we start to think about how do I identify value creation in the short term? There's a lot of applications of this technology that are deployable today. There's tasks and, and problems and projects that can be done on site with iterations of this technology in the next year or two years. Um, and so when I think about how I talk to customers and how we work together, it really is about sitting down and saying, let's not think about this as a piece where we're putting in a lot of investment and work to then see an ROI in six, seven years. Let's think about this as how do we put in that work and make sure we're generating ROI now as we build on that pathway to, to that magnificent opportunity that's presented by this technology um, as the industry goes through its digital change? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some of those benefits that companies can see now. Sure. So I think about this problem in two ways. And you know, one of the ways that I talked about a little bit earlier is how do you generate value now? And the other is, is how do you make sure the problems that you're solving today are, are, are building you towards the future uh, to make sure that you're really understanding how this technology can be deployed? And so there's, there's benefits on both sides of that. So when you look at potential applications of autonomy or automation in your business in the short term, really you have to put them in the framework of how is this advancing me down this journey? And some, some examples of, of ways that that can be done are with things that you already think about. So if you think about your, the vehicles that you might have deployed in your facility today and their telemetry and the information that you get from them and the data that you collect on their maintenance and, and how they're performing, their charging state, all of these things are integral to autonomous systems operating correctly. 
And if you're able to deploy solutions quickly, you can get that information and data and leverage it in new ways within your business. There's, you know, and that goes for predictive maintenance, that goes for utilization of those vehicles, making sure that's maximized. Um, another way to think about this is how it actually affects the problems that you're trying to solve in your business right now. And so if you're thinking about from a manufacturing standpoint, throughput efficiency and transferring materials from one place to another and how that affects the outcomes coming out of your business or in a distribution center, how you're thinking about how you get boxes off shelves to trucks as fast as possible so they're out and getting delivered to the customers. Those are all things that, you know, autonomy and the applications that are possible today can help solve um, and mm -hmm. can improve. Uh, another big thing we like to talk about outside of maybe that indoor landscape is, and you know, applications in more of an industrial setting outdoors. So if you think about mining or construction, a big concern there is safety. Um, a big, you know, thing to think about for the application of autonomy here is, is how can we make sure that we make the environment that you're that you're operating in and your your customers and your um, employees are operating in as safe as possible. Um, and so to the extent that you know autonomy can help you navigate dangerous situations uh, that, that your employees encounter every day, or mm -hmm. simply make sure that they feel more safe and comfortable in doing their job, that can generate returns for your business uh, in the short term and the long term, uh, when you think mm -hmm. about insurance costs and just general happiness and safety of your workers. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the questions people may have who aren't really working in the space every single day is the differences between what can happen now versus what we expect to be able to offer in five years. Now, you touched on some of the things that autonomy can offer today. So maybe you can just kind of bookend that by describing what the space and what the experience of industrial autonomy will look like in five years once uh, the sector has really come of age? I, I could postulate about what the world will look like in five years. And I think there's some things that we know will happen. There will be increases in automation and autonomy in, in the material handling space and in other industrial use cases and, and outdoor activities if you think about mining and construction. But what's really possible in the next five years is going to be driven by the customers that I work with every day. Um, they are the experts in their business and they are the experts in understanding where you know, real opportunity can be created. And the benefit of working on autonomous solutions now is that the end customer gets to give that input. As a technology provider and as, as, you know, as companies grow in this space where they're developing this very complex software, the more that they speak with these end customers and get feedback on what the problems they have that need to be solved today, tomorrow, in the future, the better the products are going to be for those companies. Let's say that there's somebody listening to this podcast. They are totally bought in on the idea that they need to start exploring autonomous uh, use cases and autonomous vehicle deployment deployments for their space today. The question becomes where to begin. I really focus on on two things. Uh, the first is, you know, where do you have problems in your business today that are associated with error uh, that could okay. be improved? Um, and, you know, a way to, to, to think about that a little bit deeper is, is, you know, in our context, at engine, we, we are making vehicles run by themselves. Um, and what we notice at, at a lot of industrial use cases is there's already a lot of automation solutions that have been deployed, but mm -hmm. they have vehicles running around everywhere. And before, before the last couple of years, there wasn't a solution out there to really automate that or make that autonomous. And now there is. And so look at the opportunities where there's error in, in those spaces in your business that have to do with those vehicles where you haven't been able to, to, to deploy an autonomous solution before or increase efficiency and really focus on those first because those, that's, that's the low-hanging fruit. That's where you can generate value right away. The exciting part is that there's also another side to this, and this is where you really get interesting ideas and where it really helps to talk with the technology providers um, in the space on how to solve new problems. Um, okay. And that is taking a look at your business and saying, what actually couldn't be done before? So whether there is, you know, an application of an autonomous vehicle that was too unsafe uh, with a human manufacturer before, but now you can take advantage of. The simple thing to do first is to sit down and say, hey, this is what we already have issues with. And this is, these are the problems that can be solved very quickly. But also okay. it's, it's, it's really valuable and a lot of fun to sit down and say, what couldn't we do before? What, what is this opening up for us? Um, and how can we work with technology companies providing these solutions to make sure we can accomplish those goals as well. All right, so those are some great places where people can identify opportunities for autonomy. So I guess my next question is, when would be a good time to bring in autonomous vehicle ex experts or sort of begin this journey? You know, if you're already thinking about replacing your fleet, if you have a fleet of vehicles mm -hmm. on site and you're saying, hey, it's time for us to replace these vehicles, 
Um, that's a great time to sit down and say, hey, maybe we should think about an autonomous solution for our next deployment. Another way that you can think about investments and other pieces of your businesses, if you're saying, you know, we really want to increase safety and we're about to invest a lot of money in our operations and our protocols so that we can make our, our facility a safer place to work. And that has mm -hmm. downstream effects for your insurance, your insurance rates and also employee safety and, and just employee morale. If you're going to make an investment there, this is a great place and a great time to, to really deploy autonomous technology as well. So when, when leaders of businesses sit down and they think about, you know, putting in money to their business and what the ROI there is and, and how they make sure that their MPV is going to be right for this investment uh, over the time of, of, of its deployment, uh, mm -hmm. making sure that you're maximizing the ROI is going to be of utmost importance to them. And deploying autonomous technology at those times is a way to maximize your ROI and investment. I think one of the differences between autonomy today and where autonomy will be in five years is that there is still an integration piece. Uh, you know, most organizations can expect that they'll have to work with engineers uh, to get the autonomous system, whatever that may look like, up and running in their domain. So what can you tell us about that process? How does Sinjin actually bring autonomy to these spaces? You know, we come in, we map the, the environment that you, you want to deploy in, we make sure we get the data collected to, to be successful. Um, and then we, we go and launch first iterations. And what's unique about what we're able to do is, is, you know, we don't require you to make this large upfront capital investment by through the purchase of a vehicle or the restructuring of your facility. We can come in and prove that business case to you by retrofitting the vehicles you own today. Um, mm. And it's great if if you're going to make investment in, in the newest technology and new vehicles anyway, you know, we can, we can work with those vehicles as well, where we have relationships with, with many OEMs and in, in the industrial landscape and, and, and have an understanding of how their vehicles work. Mm -hmm. um, but if you really just want to get this deployed and understand how it works in your business and get that information gathering, that's a possibility as well. We know that a, a big part of the value of these vehicles is, is the underlying business case. It's, are you really going to improve my efficiency and throughput? From zero to ten percent, are you? Am I really going to see the the gains in safety that you're talking about that reduces my insurance premiums uh, significantly, so that you know my operating margin comes down? Um, mm -hmm. And we understand that with a technology like this, seeing is believing. And so, by deploying technologies in a way that allows the end customer to see the business case in action, and then scale that deployment afterwards, uh, those are things that Sinjin is able to do because of how we've designed our software platform. How we've did, how we've built this out to lay the pipes to have all of the possibilities that autonomy can provide, but also mm -hmm. being able to narrow it down to what you need today, um, and then work with you to scale up to that five, six, seven year goal that everybody talks about, where your business is humming and is is as efficient as possible. So let's talk about timeline. If someone wanted to get started with autonomous vehicles today, how long would it take them to bring it to their environment? We're talking on the, on the matter of, of months for initial deployments and and in months to, to single years for really seeing this technology operating in your facility in a way that's, that's uh, what people are looking for for opportunity. Regardless of where your business is and what, pro what problem you're trying to solve, we can mm -hmm. come in and, and, and work with you to make sure you're getting the solution you need. Yeah, so one of the themes of this episode really is that this stuff is available today, we can move forward with it today, and companies should start thinking about it today. So. With in that spirit, what are some success stories that you can share about companies that have already gone through this process with Sinjin? Yeah, one uh, story that I love to talk about when I get this question is uh, is our experience with Loblaw um, up in up in Canada. Uh, it's a great story to tell because it shows um, the the willingness of of companies in this space to really be at the cutting edge, and that's what Loblaw was trying to do. They really wanted to to make sure that they were investigating and experiencing what the cutting edge technology and, and the autonomy space really could do. Um, and that's something that we're always, you know, challenging our potential customers to do. Um, but it was also, it's also a great example of how, you know, Sinjin developed its, its strategy for approaching these types of businesses. So what we did with Low Law was um, they have a large corporate campus and um, they have, you know, they had corporate buses that would shuttle, you know, passengers around uh, their campus and and we made those people movers, those buses autonomous. And we were able to kind of drop, um, move those people around corporate campus in a way that was a fun experience for them, but it was also a demonstration for Lobo that this technology had the ability to be deployed today. 
moving people around on an open road um, in a bus setting is a more complex problem um, than trying to simply do horizontal material handling in a manufacturing mm -hmm. center. Well, I've seen that videos and the parking lot was like covered in snow. Like exactly. it was a really treacherous environment for sure. Exactly. And so it's the low blot appointment is a great example of saying, even if your task is more complex, there is a pathway to success and autonomy. And even if you are starting um, at a more simple task or in an environment that's not as complex, mm -hmm. the technology itself is capable of doing so much more. And, and that's why the lowball example, when I talk about it, is a great way to show companies that, you know, you don't have to start in this complex space. You don't have to do this. But mm -hmm. look, the technology can do a very complex thing. It can manage weather patterns changing. It can manage, you know, the ground being wet, snow being piled up everywhere. We're moving people. Mm -hmm. There's cars going out of parking spots. Those are complex environments. And if the technology can be successful in that setting, it can 100% be successful in a simpler one. So for anyone listening, if they're interested in beginning their autonomy journey, what should they do? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, like start thinking about those questions that I, I was talking about before. Uh, look at your business, see where that opportunity uh, exists and where you think you can capitalize and start generating ROI now for your, for your investment. Um, and once you kind of have a grasp of what you're thinking about there, reach out to us here at Syngin. We're always willing to talk uh, to new customers and, and really understand the intricacies of their business so that we can help them on this journey. And, you know, the best way to do that is just, you know, hit us up on our website. You can go to syngin.com slash services, send us a note, um, and, and we'll reach out really quickly and, and make sure that we get connected. Cool. Well, that sounds awesome. All right, Jordan, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Luke. Thanks for having me.